What is going on guys? Pat out in the shop. Uh, today I want to talk about two piece uh, rear main seal blocks, small block Chevys versus one piece versus Vortex, uh, Vortex blocks. So this one right, right here we have a Vortex block and I'm going to show you some of the difference between the Vortex and then the, the 86 and up roller blocks. There was kind of the in between before they went to the Vor Vortex blocks in 96 and then what the difference between that and the early uh, two piece rear main blocks. So Chevy didn't really change uh, the small block Chevy uh, up until 1985 in 1986 when they came out with a two piece or uh, the one piece rear main seal. Before that it was a two piece rear main seal um, which had its issues with sealing uh, and leaks and stuff but as time went on they decided to change it up a little bit and change how the back of the crankshaft worked. So here is a two piece rear main seal. If you've never seen one before this is what is on an early small block Chevy uh, pre-1986 or so, 85-86. Uh, so it's exactly what it sounds like. The rear main seal on the crank is two pieces that butt up against each other. Very prone to leaks uh, if not done properly, especially uh, to help it a lot of the times you'll offset the seal in the bore and not line it up perfectly um, on the block surface. You offset them and that does help. But in 86, GM came out with what's called a one-piece rear main seal. So you can see big difference. They came out with this aluminum housing where the early ones were built into the, the rear cap. Built, there's this cap with an extent, extension onto the crank and it would the, the seal would ride inside here. But on these Vortec or late model blocks, they went with a one-piece rear main seal. There's this aluminum housing that actually goes on to the the block, the back of the block, and seals on the crankshaft. As you can see here, here's a one-piece rear main seal uh, crank. It's got the a large journal on the back where the seal rides on, and then the housing bolts up against the block here. Um, other than this back part in the bearing cap, from here forward is very much the same on uh, an old school. Uh, small block Chevy, they use the same bearings, uh, rods, pistons, rod bearings from that forward. But you got to make sure you have the right flex plate because a flex plate will bolt up different to this crankshaft and obviously the seal and everything at the back is different. So making your way forward to the front of the block, um, you can see that this block is a uh, 880 Vortec block and it is not drilled for a fuel pump. This one is quite obvious where some of the earlier um, Vortec blocks or uh, 63 blocks were actually drilled for um, a mechanical fuel pump and you'll have to run a cap on there or a cover if you're not using it. Uh, this one's very obvious. Some of the other ones, they actually, this is all tapped but the, the rod hole for the pump is not drilled all the way through. They do make jigs for those ones where you can bolt it up and, and finish drilling it through and then drilling the drain back hole. Um, I personally have never used one. Um, usually I'll just use an electric fuel pump or tell the customer they need to use an electric fuel pump or get a 638 block roller block that has the provision for um, a mechanical fuel pump. So the biggest advantage to the later blocks is the provision for roller cam. Uh, as you can see here, there's this, this spider plate and it's held in with these three bolts down the center of the block. These are drilled and tapped to hold this in place and then these plates go in and these stop the lifters from spinning and then this all goes along each side and holds everything in place. Not all of the blocks, especially the early ones that are used in like the TBI trucks, the 63 blocks, these are drilled. So you'd the provisions are there, you just have to drill and tap these yourself. Um, these are still milled down. I haven't seen uh, one that has these not drilled and these not milled down. So you can use a flat tap it cam in here, but if you have you know, if it's set up for roller, then all you have to do is drill and tap those out and you've got to get your spider plate and your retaining plates, lifters, and you're laughing. Okay, with the front of your um, one piece rear main block or Vortec block, uh, you, there's a few things you got to know. Uh, first is there's a retaining plate that actually holds the cam in. So you can see there's two holds here and that actually holds your roller cam in. Flat tappy cams don't have this because the lifters actually stop the cam from walking in out of the block. But with a, with a flat lobe on a roller cam, you have to actually keep the cam from moving back and forth in the block. So there's a retainer plate that goes in there that does that. Real simple, it work great, just bolts right in. 
cam bearings and all that stuff stay the same. Uh, that doesn't change. All right, so you'll notice with the Vortec timing cover, when you pull the cover off, um, it's actually gonna be missing two bolts um, compared to an old school steel um, timing cover. So chances are if you're doing any sort of performance build carburetor, you're gonna throw that right out. Uh, you're actually not even supposed to reuse them. They're kind of a one-shot deal thing. But if you're switching to um, just a steel cover, which you can on these blocks, um, you can bolt an old school uh, regular chrome or metal steel um, timing cover up to it. But there's a few things you gotta know. So when you pull that cover off, you're gonna notice right away that there's this reluctor ring. That comes off, you're not gonna be reusing that. And we're gonna talk about the dampener in a second, so you can get rid of that. But you'll notice uh, two things. First, some of these blocks, later ones, especially like 2000 or so, and up like the later Vortex, um, these holes, holes won't even be drilled. Other ones uh, will be, I'll show you an example of that in a second. They will be drilled, and typically you'll find they will, but this one in particular, it's not drilled. But what you can do is put the new timing cover, cover up against it, uh, mark your holes, and drill and tap it. No problem, it'll work fine. Um, so that's not a big issue. I wouldn't try to not use those holes and just hope for the best with silicone. I would definitely, if you're gonna use one of these blocks and they're not drilled and tap, to actually to actually tap those holes and, and uh, do it properly. Another thing you're gonna notice is there's no locating quarter inch locating uh, pins, dowel pins for the timing cover. The, the ones are actually on the vortex are built into the cover um, so when you pull it off, they won't be there. All you have to do is get the old school um, dowel pins and tap them in and then, then you're laughing. But don't try to do it uh, where you center it with the bolts without those. Make sure you get those bolt holes and you'll save yourself from taking out that front seal. So here's another Vortec block. You can see this one has the gallery plugs knocked out and they're actually drilled and tapped which is not a bad idea if you're doing a build. Uh, make sure you do that before it goes to the machine shop. It's always a good idea. I might post a video about how to do that yourself coming up. But you can see this Vortec block does not have the dowel pins, but it has all the holes drilled and tapped. So this is a little easier. All you gotta do is put in some dowel pins and then the steel cover can go on a regular um, small block Chevy steel cover, nothing changes. Another thing to note on these uh, later blocks, because the cam sits out farther, because of the retaining plate, um, and the way this is machined is a little different than the old school blocks. Uh, if you're going to a two-piece, uh, or sorry, a, a double roller timing chain, you gotta make sure that you have clearance. You can see this one's ground a little bit. Uh, sometimes I find with the double roller timing chains on these late style blocks, they actually will rub on the block. So it might not be a bad idea before you send your block out to the machine shop to, even with your old cam, just bolt up your um, new timing chain your sprocket, just the top sprocket, bolt it up to the cam with the retaining plate in and just make sure you have good clearance when you're spinning that timing chain because you'll find, or that timing, uh, timing gear, because you'll find a lot of them with the double roller chains, they will hit the block. All right, so another thing to note about the dampener, this is a big one um, that will cause you grief if you overlook it. If you're removing the reluctor wheel on your Vortec motor, you have to get a different balancer. This distance is different and the balancer will sit too far into the block if you remove this. You can use just a regular old school neutral balance 350 uh, harmonic balancer. It'll go right on, but if you remove this, you gotta use a different one. But if you keep this, you gotta use a Vortec dampener. Don't mess that up or your bell alignment will be way off. So let's talk about strength now. Um, is a one piece rear main block stronger than an old school two piece rear main block or vice versa? It really comes down to, in my opinion, uh, the thickness and how well the block was casted. I've checked uh, lots of two-piece rear main blocks, Sonic tests of them, I've checked one-piece rear main blocks. I find, personally, that the one-piece rear main blocks are more consistently, uh, more consistently made. Uh, 
you don't see a lot of block shiftings where the older ones you'll notice that there's a core shift in the block and you can actually tell when you look at the cam bore at the front of the motor that it's off center slightly and that's always a good sign that there's a bit of a shift in the block um, some guys really think that the old school blocks are stronger but there's really no proof that I've ever seen that, to indicate that I prefer the new school uh, one piece rear main blocks I find they're just better sealing surfaces uh, that I find often when I sonic test them the, the cylinder walls are thicker um, but I don't have any proof that they are for sure stronger um, in my Trans Am I'm building up a uh, one piece rear main 383 stroker for mine and I'm running uh, a new school one piece rear main because it's the thickest block stock block I've ever I've ever sonic tested so I picked that block just because it was thick and uh, I still half filled it with um, with block block filler just to make sure but we'll see how long it holds up I'm still holding out uh, I don't want to switch to LS yet I love my LS motors I have a bunch sitting here but in my car I just want to see how far I can go with a turbo small block shift. Alright let's talk about 2 bolt versus 4 bolt on the late model blocks um, there's a few theories about how to tell without pulling the pan if it's a 2 bolt or a 4 bolt block on these uh, either a 6 3 block or an 880 block um, in my experience there's no way to tell uh, you have to pull the pan off and actually take a look so you can see here I have an 880 block it's a 2 bolt main and right beside it I have um, uh, 880 block that's a 4 bolt main uh, there's no real difference uh, some people say that at the back of the bell housing uh, if the top hole is drilled it's going to be a 4 bolt but I have a 2 bolt main sitting over in the corner that has a top bolt drilled so <laughs> you don't know I can't I can't seem to find a way to tell um, if it's coming out of a 2500 pickup or something it's a higher chance it's going to be uh, a four bolt main, but it's really a crapshoot, especially if you're just buying the motor without knowing what it's coming out of. Uh, you don't really know until you pull the pan off. Another thing you might be wondering if you're going with a um, one piece rear main seal is if the heads are changed uh, because of maybe you're thinking Vortec heads, it bolts up different. You can bolt up your old school Chevy heads to your one piece rear main block, 63 block, 880 block. They bolt right up, nothing there changes. Um, the only thing that really changes is if you're doing a roller cam, maybe the, obviously the lifters and the push rods will be different length. But as far as heads, the heads will bolt right up to your one piece remain block, nothing changes. Another thing to remember is when you're ordering an oil pan, make sure you order an oil pan for one piece remain block. Uh, the oil pans are different, will not work and the dipstick is always on the passenger side on these late blocks as well so make sure you order a passenger side one piece rear main um, oil pan and you won't have any issues so there you go guys um, one piece versus two piece versus Vortec uh, hopefully that answered most of the questions you have if you have any questions feel free to throw me um, a comment down at the bottom I'll feel free to answer that or send me an email at pcperformance1 at outlook.com and I can answer any questions you have uh, I've done a lot of these so I've pretty much run into most of the issues I would imagine you would have um, like I said with the I prefer the one piece rear main blocks you have better sealing uh, with the with the crank seal there uh, Typically, I find the castings are better with these later blocks. They're stronger um, with a better casting. First, they're not stronger per se, as long as you know it's a good block. Um, you got to watch for your mechanical fuel pump. Some do, some don't. You got to make sure you get the proper timing cover and harmonic balancer, oil pan, all that stuff. It's going to save you headaches if you you know know your information, and that's why I thought I would make this video. So, other than that those few things they're very similar pistons and rods and all that stuff stay the same just the crank and everything is different oil pump stays the same all that stuff is is identical um, it's just a few little details so please like and subscribe let me know if you have any questions thanks guys